Hello and uh, welcome to the TIGSY training course. In this lesson, we'll show you the TIGSY Visual UI Builder. Here's the dashboard that you can see after you have logged into your account. You can see a projects list showing your projects on the left hand side. As you select different projects, uh, detailed information is displayed about them. There's also a form on the page for creating a new application. You could just input a name here and press the Create button to create the default type of app, but instead we're going to click the link named More Create Options to see the different options available. On this page, you can see all the different available types of apps that you can create. You could choose a phone app, or you have some more options, including a tablet app and a Windows 8 app as an option. You can also create an app from a backup. And of course, you can create a copy of an example app like the Weather app or the Twitter app, so you can start out with an app that already has some functionality built in. Let's create a phone app, type in the name, and press Create. In a couple of seconds, the UI Builder will be loaded and you'll see the start page for UI design. The main steps to creating a TIGSY app are displayed along the top. Also, there are some useful links to different information resources for TIGSY underneath those steps. On the left side, we have the project navigator that contains all the pieces that go into making the UI. Pages, pop-ups, templates, custom CSS, JavaScript coding, custom components and service interfaces. At the top, there's a Create New button for adding these things to your app. Let's go ahead and see Start Screen. It's created by default for a phone app. This is a simple empty screen. It has a header and at the bottom a footer and a main content area in the middle. To the left, you see the Components panel with a palette of UI components that you can drag and drop right onto the screen. You can also easily delete components. Each component has a list of properties displayed in the right side panel when it's selected. The properties are divided into custom and common options. The custom options for a button are pretty straightforward. Display text, any icon, its positioning, and swatch, which the swatch is used by most UI components to easily change their look and feel on, on the fly. Common components are shared by all components. The most important co common property is the name of the component. You can access the component by this name from JavaScript, also from the UI Builder. That's the name that references the component. Let's call this button Details button. You can also change the visibility with a little checkbox and margins for your component, as well as the CSS class name so you can easily change the element's appearance through CSS. Now let's add a new screen to our application. We're going to have to scoot up to the upper left corner of the screen, clicking on Create New and selecting Page. Here we see a pop-up to create a new screen. Let's call the page uh, Details Screen. I think that would be a good name. All right, you can choose between two templates for a new screen, as you can see underneath. It could be a blank mobile screen, which is basically the same as the start screen that Tigsy created for you already, and the grid layout page, which differs only in that Tigsy adds a grid component into the content area. Well, let's click Create Page. Now you should see a new page over in the Project Navigator called Detail Screen as well as the old start screen. Now you can um, you can also switch back and forth using the tabs on the top and now we're going to change the caption right here by changing the properties on the right hand side. So we're going to change that to Tigsy Details. Then we're going to add a text label underneath so that we could fill in some text here. So let's put the text in. Now we have an app with two screens but the screens are not connected to each other. To connect the screens together, we use a feature called Events. First, let's select the component, the button that will connect the screens. Let's go down to the Events panel, which just helps us to set up things. Now we click the component again, and you can see in the under component, its name is selected there. 
and it matches the name that we put in under properties. That's how that works. It's a, it becomes the name. So we're also going to select the event, which will be a click, and the action that's triggered by it, which is navigate to a page, and then we select the actual page and add it. Now you can see it, the event is there, and we can now um, save and preview. When the preview is done loading, we can see our start screen. There we go. After pressing the button, it takes us to the details screen. Now the only thing that's missing is a back button. So now we're going to go back to the application design in order to add that. So let's go to the details screen and select the, uh, make sure we're there. Okay, now select the caption element. And all we have to change is a little checkbox that's called back button. And there we go. Now all we have to do is save the app and redo the preview. And now you can see when we click the button and see the details, we have the back button to go back to the very beginning. And we can keep going back and forth like this for quite a long time. One thing you might notice is that it's reloading the, the text completely. This is because of the way that um, the, the defaults that are set up in the system so that it only loads the first page of an app when it's launching the app. But there is a way around this if you want to preload everything. And for that, we have to go back to the application design. To do this, what we need to do is go into the project navigator under project and under app settings here we have a lot of different things we can change about the project as a whole like its name we can change the project description we can change the start page we can also change the default theme the default swatch that determines what components will be like the default page size and at the bottom, you'll see what we came for, which is uh, render all in one HTML5. This option forces the app to use a multi-page template, so all the screens will be loaded at the beginning. Now you just need to save the application, and we'll refresh the preview page. Now click on the button, and you can see that the details screen appears immediately without any delays. That's it for lesson one. I hope you found the video useful.